Hi. Welcome back to a Nomad Tale. In this episode, we're going to test out a variation of the Nomad playstyle. Instead of building a mobile base of operations, we're going to enact a bit of a caravan, if you will. And to accomplish that, we're going to need an entire new blueprint. So, with no further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Okay, so a nomad tale. Right. A story about traveling around JSpace. So far, we have exclusively used a single strategy. That strategy, of course, being taking an orca and carefully moving it around JSpace and using the orca within the confines of a pass, right? That strategy is really nuts because it allows us to reship on the fly, store a ton of stuff. It really is probably one of the most flexible playstyles in the game. You can do a lot with those ships. However, it is not the only possible way to nomad, right? If you ask people what nomading means, and I learned this early on, if you ask them, you get a lot of different answers. Obviously the one theme is that you don't stay in any one location forever, but I've been told that nomading could mean what I believe day tripping to mean, right? Nomading could also mean exclusively the orca chase pace thing. Either way, the point to, to make here is that nomading is kind of a, a vague concept, right? And for something to be vague, there has to be multiple avenues in which one can do that thing. So to prove that point, that nomading is more than just an orca and a pass, we're going to try something slightly different for this episode and maybe even future episodes. What we're going to do is get rid of the orca for now. We're not going to use passes either. At the end of the last episode, you saw the porpoise. You also saw it on the intro to this episode, right? So you probably have an idea of what we're going to do here. But I am going to spell it out. And before I do that, I want to give a little bit of backgrounding, okay? The reason why I'm, I'm interested in trying this now is because we have all of our characters pretty much set up similar to how we want them, right? We have our military branch. Now, this is the meat of my characters. These are the reasons I have the account, right? So I can have a main, a backup tier three, a utility, cruiser and uh, a bubble ship, right? These are very important. This is why I play EVE personally, right? And then we have a logistics wing, which is this. Terrible circles. Um, <laughs> the logistics characters are the ones that make the playstyle work, right? So for example, this is my Jitta trader. He sits in Jitta. He has good trade skills, and he's going to have perfect trade skills eventually. And then you have our hauler, who uses DSTs and blockade runners. And we have our orca and porpoise pilot, and lastly, a spare hacker scanner. And we'll get into why we need him in a bit. Finally, we have our labor division. And for now, all these do, these little guys, all they do is mine gas, right? But I have some future plans for these guys. Uh, to really take advantage of this character slot in the future. But for now, all these dudes do is mine gas, okay? So, we have three wings. We have one, two, three. Military, logistics, and labor, okay? This is a lot of characters. For, for me, at least. Maybe not for you. But this is a lot of characters, right? I was thinking, one of the reasons why we needed to swap so much at the start of this was because we actually didn't have that many characters. At the start... We had him, we had him, we had him. This is what I started with, okay? Now when I came back to the game, I made him very quickly, right? And then I started making more characters, right? All these were made after that. So I started with very few, this was made after. But now I have a lot of characters and they all have kind of settled into their roles. So what I realized is that I actually don't need to swap ships to the extent that I did when I started. What that means for us is that this character can stay sitting in Loki, and we do not need to refit on the Orca anymore to make PvP happen. Why? Because we have a Proteus, we have 
this ship, which we'll get into. We have a uh, bubble ship and we have a Loki now. We have a lot of ships with a lot of versatility. We don't need to reship as much. So what that does is that opens up the ability for us to drop the Orca and use a porpoise to compress gas instead. Doing that, we it's a trade-off, right? We lose the ability to store tons of stuff, have all these crazy swaps. We lose the ability to easily roll holes with stored yachts, although there are other techniques we're gonna look into. We lose a bunch of stuff, truthfully, but we gain something huge by putting this on, an or on a porpoise instead of an orca, right? We gain the ability to move holes at will with no prep, and it's impossible to track us now. We can move all of our characters in five minutes through any wormhole with no preparation. Right? And you're going to see this done multiple times. Probably so many times you'll get sick of it. I want to go on a gas expedition, right? I want to go out there and go to class fives and class sixes and huff the really good gas. I'm going to stop screwing around with the perimeters as much. I'm going to find a way using these ships to get all the gas out of a vital core reservoir. We know we can get all the gas out of a ICR, but the vital, I don't think anybody's done that yet. Or if they have, I haven't read about it. So that's going to be our main goal. And along the way, we're going to do all the normal stuff that you would expect out of wormholing, right? Hacking, PvP, scanning, mapping, dealing with shatters, seeding. We're going to be doing all that still. So I just want to give you a little, a little hint, a little teaser as to how we're doing this. So if we look at a system that I have here, look at these safe spots. This is how we're going to be playing the game from now on. We're going to be using just a huge array of safe spots to move around in and to be safe with. And if done properly, there's very little chance we can lose any ships at all, except for on wormholes themselves, okay? So let's go to the next section and we'll uh, discuss a little bit more and then we'll start getting into the actual gameplay of how this is gonna go and we'll get right back on track to uh, the standard A Nomad Tale uh, day by day. As mentioned, there was a few more things I wanted to touch on. We have the strategy kind of figured out, right? Now let's look at a couple of the changes we're making to some of the ships and to some of the philosophies that we're using as well. So the first thing, um, and probably the most important thing to touch on is obviously we're using a porpoise instead of an orca, right? So a porpoise is way cheaper than an orca. Um, uh, it's so cheap to the point where, like, I don't even really care if we lose it. There's really not a lot of stuff inside of it. It's kind of just here to compress. It's kind of cool. It's just floating around, doing some compressed stuff, right? So, long story short, this is a full... Well, I guess it's not full. This is like a hybrid compression bait corpus, right? So it has, like, almost 80,000 EHP, scram web, unlimited cap, um, and a newt, right? Medium newt at that. Basically what happens is, as this porpoise uh, flies around J-Space, it's generally in safe spots. It goes from a safe spot to a wormhole to another safe spot. A very small amount of time where you can actually tackle this thing. And to be clear, if you are there and you have a scram, you can hold this thing down. However, the uh, fleeting nature and the very small sliver of time you have to actually catch this combines nicely with the fact that it's also a bait fit so if you do get it you need to have people there <laughs> to deal with it right otherwise I'm just gonna 
you know, kill whatever ship ends up tackling it. So it could be a nice little source of content at some point. We might get people trying to bite on it and we can bait them and kill them. But ultimately, I'm going to try to keep this thing alive by just keeping it low key. But um, much like the ventures of old, we have kind of assumed that this is going to get tackled and we have started the fit and the, the game plan from that point and worked backwards. So next thing I'm going to talk about is this ca this character, which is a backup scanner slash hacker. Now we have a fresh account and a probe. Yeah, the probe looks just a bit like this. So the reason I have this character is because our main is going to be sitting in the Loki. He can't hop swap to a Estero or Cheetah anymore. So we actually need to have a dedicated character to do the relic sites that we run into if we run into them, right? It also really helps to have another backup scanner. Uh, for now, this guy's in a probe, which is hilarious, but um, he'll eventually be in a covert ops ship, like a Cheetah or something. One thing to note about this fit is that um, you'll notice there's no warp core stab on it. That's because I'm trying out this fit where essentially you sacrifice the warp core stab and instead you put a SIBO on here and an ionic uh, field projector. We can target out to almost 70 kilometers, which conveniently the cargo scanner is about 70 km. What this fit does, right, um, it essentially warps into the relic sites and you'll see me do this later. And it scans all the cans from very, very far away, almost like an artillery hacking ship, right? And then once I know what cans I want to hack, I simply make a mental note of them. You can put bookmarks too. You can fly past them and put bookmarks. But I make a mental note of the cans. And then what we do is we come back and ninja hack those cans in particular and be nice and safe. Now, the ship is very vulnerable to getting caught in sight. But again, we're going to take a few more risks, be a little bit less paranoid with this setup and really enjoy it. Okay. So that is the hacker scanner character. Now... The last character I want to talk about is this guy. Log this guy out. On our third account, our main PvP pilot, Calstead, was flying a Pilgrim. He is no longer flying a Pilgrim. If you know your ships very well, you'll know that this right here is a curse. We have essentially switched over to a curse from a Pilgrim. Now, why are we doing that? Well, we mentioned a bunch of reasons why we want to do this in the past, right? It has better nuding, longer range. Um, one of the reasons we didn't want to do it was because we were still getting comfortable with the idea of manipulating all these uh, ships around at once. We're getting better at that, more comfortable. So, and since we're living in safe spots, the curse is passive, which makes it immune to descan. Works really nicely with that. Now, for this ship, I'm actually not going to get into the fit right now. Um, but this is a borderline meme fit. We'll just call it a borderline meme fit with a whole lot of utility that will bust out when the time is right. Um, we should have a lot of fun with this. Those are the three major changes we're making to the character lineups, right? Everybody else is very similar to where we left off. Um, and of course, we've picked up another venture pilot as well. Because we have bookmark-based living now, like safe spot-based living like this, we actually don't care if people live in here. We don't use passes. We don't give away our positions. It's not easy to scan us with combat scanners because I'm a descan addict. Um, so basically what that means is that I can move into anybody's hole I want. I can move into a corporation's hole. I can move into a player's hole. And for example, I moved into this hole, which is like a farm holding corp for uh, these guys. Which seemed like, you know, I have no idea if they're good or not. No clue. But they have a decent kill board, so I imagine they're good. But the thing is, I just don't care. Because, look where I am. I'm literally up here. They, don't even, they hardly even know where I am or that I'm here, right? You kind of have to catch me bringing the porpoise into the system and then know I'm in here. And then just, like, get really lucky with scanning. Even then, for what, a porpoise? I mean, yeah. I think this strategy really makes us a lot more free, just in general. Which is cool. Uh, we lose some utility and get some freedom, so we're going to try it out. Give it a whirl. Okay, so... Just scanning down a C1, and I find a heron just floating in space. I warp my dictor to it, and it's empty. There's nobody in here. It's just another floating ship in J-Space. Not sure... Not sure who left this here. 
<laughs> Whose kid is this? Honestly, someone come get your kid. I don't even want to kill it. I seriously don't even want to kill it, but... I mean... What other option do I have? Yeah, so how weird is this? I saw this wormhole flash. Who's this guy? Cloth Corrigion. Warp to there at 100? Whoa. Just came out of here. Yeah, I was just scanning the system down all casual like. Okay, so it is another day in peaceful nomad land. And while I'm still not into the full swing of things yet on this porpoise leg of the adventure, I have hit a pretty significant milestone. That milestone is, I have set up my own private pathfinder with uh, AWS services and a cheap domain, which I am currently having to hide, but we will one day show. Now, the, the crazy thing about the, uh, the Pathfinder interface is that the one I've been using was a public one, um, so the data would get deleted, and occasionally you would notice how slow everything was, like it would be sluggish and so on. But with a private Pathfinder, you have all of the resources allocated to yourself, and it's pretty snappy. So the first thing I noticed was that everything was really crisp and clean, right? I love that about it. But the important part about having a, a, a private Pathfinder is that the data is all of our own now, meaning that nobody has access to this data that I'm going to record. Now, you might be going, okay, who cares if they see your data, blah, blah, blah. But I'd like to use Pathfinder as a journal or a diary of sorts, right? Within Pathfinder, there is a note section. So I can actually leave notes in here. And since I now have control over who sees this data, what I'm able to do is actually start recording the dang buildings, right? So whenever we see a Citadel now, we can record that permanently. We can slowly start to spider through Anoikis and scrape up more data, right? Um, some other advantages of Private Pathfinder, meaning like um, things that I get out of it that the, uh, the public one doesn't have is I can actually modify it, right? I can actually go in and change it around. Now, however, I did use the Docker version from Gorn and Clade. Thank you, by the way, to those lovely people. Um, so I probably won't be tinkering much with it, but needless to say, I'm like extremely stoked that I have my own Pathfinder now. So we're gonna be putting that to work and we're gonna be slowly crawling our way through JSpace and creating a diary of sorts and gathering data and overall just engaging with Anoikis on another level. So very excited about that. Oh, Porp is on. Basically, we're just yellowing this porpoise right in there. The more macro cloak, trick it to a safe and log it out, and that's that. Should see the porpoise land in here. They're Proteus. And I love how I can just like show this just straight. Like you get to see in real time my decision making, how fluid this is. Like we're just in. We just went from one class six to another, right? Don't look like we're gonna get much in the way of static, so what we do is we align. Look, micro. We're nicely aligned. We go ahead and turn off the cloak and warp. And, uh, 
and warp. And that's how the porpoise moves around. Now, if somebody tackled me, I'd have to decloak both my strat cruisers, essentially. You know? And uh, try to fight them off if I wanted to. Assuming I could. Otherwise, the porpoise would just go down. Yeah, that's that's the extent of it, really. It's, it's just really that simple. It's so easy to move now. It's like it's almost an afterthought compared to the orca. Which is great, because it frees up my uh, focus and time and attention and power and patience. If I can focus them on things like gas huffing and doing the operations I want to do. And setting up some really nice PvP situations as well, so. Okay, yeah, so... I moved everything in. It's over and done with in 6-7 minutes, and uh... Apparently I'm scanning the system down. And what I'm going to do is make a bunch of safes in here. And this is going to be our new home for the foreseeable future. And this system is a class 6, as evidenced by the nebula. And it has a Rainbow Knights member in it, holding corp. So no idea who actually keeps an eye on this place, but hopefully they won't mind us using it temporarily as a form of shelter, so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get more filaments uh, to make more safe spots. I'm gonna grab some Poshman hauling filaments and a few other things from Dodixie, which I've done over here. I'm gonna pop back in, and then when downtime comes, we'll make some safes, we'll hang out, and we'll start looking for gas, finally. Feels good. A lot of setup, but it all feels worth it. As it tends to when you uh, plan ahead, right? We'll uh, see what happens tomorrow. Oh, what's that? What do we got here? This is a core. I must just cut the recording off. Look at that, it's a VCR. Holy crap. Whoa. That's awesome. Wild. Okay, maybe uh, we'll get some footage on me tackling these things sooner than I thought. Awesome. Either way, we're going to do some scanning and we'll come back to this. Wow. Cool. Okay, so there is a random mobile depot in this system. All right, so after a ton of scanning, kind of made a little chain here. But even though I scan all this down, I think what I'm going to do is mine the Vital Core Reservoir in our current staging system, right? We'll do that right now. There's really not a whole lot that goes into it. All you got to do is log the ventures on. Hey, there's nobody here. Excellent. So let's just do the 320. Actually, no, we'll do this. Because we don't want to waste any time. Let's start a timer. What we'll do is we'll follow Parthenon, all of our other three. And then with this guy, we'll kind of fly into the middle there. Just like so. Alright, we're gonna revisit an old friend. We have kind of been apart for some time, but we noticed he was hanging out here, so I'm gonna go say hello. Hey, buddy. Are you? I definitely don't want to misclick here. That would be awkward, right? But there he is in all of his glory. Oh, there's like... There's like transparent things around him. I didn't notice that the first time. There's like invisible wings here. 
Hard to see. You can see it bending though. Wild looking ship. All of his turrets are like floating. Jeez, that's a scary ship. Really don't want to get killed by this thing. Oh, well, let's not. <laughs> let's get the heck out of here. Retreat! I'd love to see its response time, but I also don't want to decloak near it and die randomly, so. Yeah. It's like you want to know the bite force of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but you also don't want to be the one it's biting, so. Yeah. We'll save that one for another time. Okay, so. We're looking at that same vital core reservoir as before. We have ninja it twice. Um, because when downtime comes, if there's rats here, they will despawn and reset the trigger. So when you come back, they will come at you again after 15 to 20 minutes or so. We've already ninja this twice and we're about to hit downtime and ninja it a third time. However, before downtime, I had the idea or rather the urge to do a little bit of testing, right? So, currently I'm about 5,000 meters away from this cloud, the edge of it, right? So we're about 3.5 meters away, 1,000 meters away from being able to harvest it with scoops, right? You with me? And way down there are all the rats that spawned in this vital core. So, um, I'm pretty much in a situation where... Um, I think... We can just sit here and mine, and these rats aren't going to hit us. Because I was playing with the aggro ranges before. And it didn't look like they were aggroing me past 300 km. So what I'm going to do right now is... I'm going to go ahead and decloak. And then we'll just align here and see if these guys aggro me or not. I mean... Is this really that easy? No way. You gotta be kidding me. Let's log a venture in and bring it here. Let's see if this works. This is weird. Are they are they gonna chase me? They're, they're not even chasing me. Huh. How strange. Let's do it like this. Let's stop here. We'll bring our venture into the fleet. We'll go ahead and fleet warp to him. And the Loki will warp to the ping, get off the grid. We'll pilot the venture. Assuming I don't decloak here, I think I'm good. Okay, so Loki's nice and safe over here. The venture's landing at the spot that Loki just was. Loki's burning. Okay, venture's landing. So. Here's my question. What's stopping me from just approaching this cloud right now and mining? And if it's really this easy, why does nobody do this? I heard somebody tell me to do this for the instrumental, right? You with me? But, I mean, those are where they spawn. We just went to the top of the cloud and you're telling me we can just mine it and they won't come? Like, this is weird. Okay, so we're mining, and we're just waiting and seeing if anybody aggroes us. This is crazy. If this is how this works, I'm going to become, like, the richest person ever. We don't have to set up... Oh, the instrumental core of the cloud is a little bit smaller, so you would have to possibly move around a bit. And drag them off the center, but here the cloud is 240 kilometer radius, 480 kilometer diameter, right? So this cloud is absolutely massive to the point where I'm actually on the outside of it right now, and because they spawn off to the side, they actually can't even aggro me. So I think I just discovered how we're gonna hoover all the gas out of the vital cores. I'm not gonna lie, I thought this was gonna be extremely challenging 
I thought I was going to have to split the rats apart, kill the frigates, and then drag the keepers off the grid a little bit. Not off the grid, but off the cloud a little bit. And do what I'm doing now. But it turns out, in a, <laughs> in a vital core reservoir, if you literally just spawn the rats and then go to the very top of the cloud, you can just mine it and they don't aggro you. I mean, this is insanity. I cannot believe it. Probably gonna nullify her off, but you never know. Polarized, so if he doesn't have it, he's screwed. So, the class 6 that we have been squatting in, it's down to only one wormhole left, which is its static. I am now in that static. What we're doing right now is taking a look around. We definitely see a citadel already. I don't think there's anything else. So, let's, we're going to warp over to the Poco. 50, 70, 100, whatever. Then we're going to record this building. Which is owned by these fellas, which is... I'm just going to assume this is a holding corp. Maybe not, actually. Huh. We'll look into it. Anyway. Ooh, look at all this. Wow. They have a pass set up. Neat. Let's just go ahead and paste this in first, before anything else. And we'll fill out who owns it. Which is... Interstellar... Academy... Academy... Of Stellar Pilots. Okay. Interesting name. And I'd like to look these guys up. I thought it was a holding corp, but now I'm not sure. So, oh, okay. Interesting. This is definitely a good player. He just hasn't been on in a while and it's very rare. This is like somebody's solo corp or like one or two guys, something like that. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, so, I have scanned down that class 5, and inside of it is an instrumental core reservoir, right? And we know we can get gas out of that with no setup, so what we're going to do, I'm going to try to walk you through exactly what's happening here. Typically, in the old Nomad style, we would simply send our ventures into this system, and mine the gas, right? That's kind of what we would do. With this system, we're going to do um, something a bit more, I don't know what you'd call it, drastic, straightforward, I don't know. But instead of sending the ventures through wormholes, the ventures are rarely, if ever, going to go through holes, maybe one at most. Instead, we're simply going to move the entire crew into the new system whenever we find a new cloud, right? And You've already seen how quick and easy this is, but I mean, realistically, like it's so smooth and simple that we kind of just enjoy doing it. You know what I'm saying? One of those things. First things first, we have a Loki on one side of the wormhole. This is the only ship that has jumped into this wormhole. We did it like 20, 30 minutes ago. This thing has only splashed one time and it was our Loki. We quickly scanned and then dipped. On the other side of this wormhole is Proteus, right? 
These ships are on either side of the hole, just in case somebody tries to tackle the porpoise, we could conceivably kill it, right? Okay. Now that you know where those two strat cruisers are, we also have a bubbler, which is cloaked, which could respond if necessary. All right, let's grab these guys and put them in a flea real quick. So we uncloak the porpoise and we run it up to the safe spot. This is a very important step. Now, I was kind of debating whether I should bring bring a blockade runner or a deep space transport for this, and I set it on the blockade runner, but we might end up switching it for this reason right here. We're going to drop our gas, right, before we move, and then we'll use the crane to bring it to us later, right? Um, and really, the reasons for this is simple. We just keep the corpus lost mail a little bit cleaner, right? So with really no prep, nothing, we're just going to YOLO the porpoise right on through there. It really does take a bubble to stop us, and they'd have to see it coming, and if they get it, they're still going to have to fight. We'll go ahead and send the Z porpoise through. What I like to do is to send the heiress in right behind it to spook people that would otherwise think to go for it, right? So you'll see the heiress land at about the same time as this guy, hopefully. Okay. Keep the Proteus cloaked. But we will definitely jam the porpoise through immediately. Back to the other side, jam the porpoise through. We only really care about this porpoise. Everybody else is pretty self-sufficient, so. Nobody on this side. The porpoise is going to splash this wormhole in a second. You'll see it. We'll tap back over to him. There's the splash. We'll tap back over. And then we simply align to a safe. Look micro. Be patient. One game tick is when that green glows. So take it off. Warp. And we're off. That's a smooth little drop. Okay. Now, we're going to pull the rest of the ships in here while he works. So, Eris comes in. Proteus comes in. Go ahead and warp them to about here. And once again, we have essentially moved our whole dang crew with very little heartache in very short amount of time. Right? So, let's get this porpoise... Uh, logged out here. You, you don't want to cloak right now. You just want to immediately log out. So make sure you drop your fleet and then log. Drop the timer by double clicking in space and then log. Okay. You want to get this porpoise offline as soon as possible before you have a real good safe setup. Okay, 16 and a half minutes. The rats start to spawn here. So we're gonna scoot off of the small cloud and switch right over to the big cloud. No smooth like, you know? We're just gonna monitor it for a little bit. Make sure that nothing uh, kills us, aggro's on us. And that should be that. But basically, we want to ninja the small cloud because the only way we can hit that is after downtimes, we can only do it for one ninja session. So we might as well just hit it instead of buffing the big cloud. But now, essentially, we're going to be mining the big cloud all day until it's basically clear. Relying on the uh, 480 kilometer diameter of the cloud to evade the rats with this pre-made bookmark that you saw us slide to at the very uh, start of this segment. So I should say. So basically, um, we've learned, although it pains me to say, all that Jedi mind trick stuff is totally irrelevant, sadly. Well, not totally irrelevant, mostly irrelevant. I think if you're going to do the Jedi orbit technique, it's actually probably safer than what I'm doing right now. Because somebody could have a pre made bookmark, somebody could, I don't know, while I blink, land, warp off real fast. You're vulnerable to combat scanning like this, too. Uh, the beautiful part about the other thing is, like, you're really not even vulnerable to combat scanning, but... Anyway, this is, like, easier setup and stuff. I might play around with the idea 
of kiting these around again. But I love the convenience of just having them sit there. You know? Like, if anybody warps through this site at 100, like, unless it's at 100, they're going to be in trouble, you know? They have to immediately warp off. So, either way, we're pretty much just watching for combat scanners. If somebody combat scans us down and warps a saber to us, that, that could probably do it. But, um, either way, I'd probably fight the saber. And, uh, try to shotgun my guys off in different directions. I mean, alternatively, I would just warp... <laughs> Try to burn towards these and aggro them. Yeah, I'm not sure. Either way, um, even if I don't have the Jedi mind, it was really cool learning how that worked and everything and testing it, so I'm not really torn up about it, but yeah, this is super convenient. The, uh, the nomad scoop technique. Again, I'm just gonna say it again. That's what I'm calling it. This is a nomad scoop technique. And, um, yeah. We're gonna make a lot of money off it. Just wait until the end of this episode. Holy crap. Just wait. Just wait. Okay. So I totally cleared that, um... Cloud of 320. Pretty neat. And since we got a pretty decent load from that other cloud, this site is pretty much kicked. What does that mean? Well, first of all, that means we're taking a break. Because it does take many hours of, you know, watching the screen to clear these sites. But second, that means we're probably gonna, possibly, depending on what's on our scan, move to another system today or tomorrow. Let's keep it moving, right? Now, we have so much gas at this point that we have to definitely move it out because we're starting to have too much value. So what I'm thinking I'll do is... Um, first, let's take a look at the gas that we have. So pretty much every time you do this, you're working with jet cans, right? You need to be comfortable with jet cans. I wouldn't go anchoring containers around to do this. That doesn't seem to be uh, safe and secure. Right. And on our porpoise, which by the way is quite a speedy ship, going 1100 meters a second with a micro when it's fully brick tanked, right? Let's go ahead and grab that gas and we will look at the gas we have. So. We have, in fact, I'm going to compress this. I feel pretty comfortable doing this, I'm not going to lie. It's over and done with so fast. It's like a minute and a half. Alright, so we have 9.5500, sorry, 955 million. Wow, that was really hard for me to imagine. 155 million right there, so we got about a bill. And then we have another stack of gas over here, which is 400 mil, right? And we got all of that from two clouds, or two sites, right? Mostly two clouds. And what's fascinating is that we did it with Tech 2 scoops as well. So we burned about a quarter fifth to a quarter of the site. Even though it's supposed to be a third that you burn, you don't actually burn a third, I've found. So, basically what I'm trying to say is there's actually a lot more value that we're leaving on the table because of our scoop choice. However, the Tech 2 scoops still do make a lot of sense to me, even now. Um, but there is a future where we switch to Syndica scoops. There is a future where we do that. We'll have to see how that goes. Either way, um, we've mined two sites now successfully with the caravan strategy, and we're going to keep it going. I, um... I have a feeling that I can get an absolutely tremendous amount of gas doing this. Completely and utterly safely and lazily, so... Yeah, let's keep it going. Alright, so I have been thinking... An awful lot about 
how safe spots work. Given that our caravan strategy requires almost exclusively usage of safe spots to function, right? So I tried to think about it for quite some time on what makes a bookmark a bookmark, and is there any way that I can systematically organize uh, a safe spot into a concept that can, uh, you know, benefit from some type of nomenclature. In this case, what we're going to do was a lot of words for what I'm about to say. What we're going to do is we're going to break down safe spots and look at what what's good, what's bad, what's convenient, what's hard to make, etc. So. To do that, I've made a bit of a chart here, throwback to episode one, right? Um, and in this chart, we kind of just take a look at a lot of different things, right? On one axis, we look at the distance to the closest static celestial, right? On the other axis, we look at the relation to the system as a whole, right? And so what we've done is we've kind of used these two concepts and I guess, mash them together and come up with a naming system for bookmarks that I think is really cool. So we have close, far, and true. Close is when you are within D-scan range of a celestial. So if you push D-scan and you see any celestials, you're close. If you push D-scan range, or D-scan and don't see any celestials, but you look at your overview and you're still within 20 AU of a celestial, you're at a far position. And the last possible position you could be in is true, which is when you see nothing on your D scan and you're greater than 20 uh, AU from a celestial, okay? So this is the distance you are from a celestial. This column, the Y axis, is the systemic relation, right? So a line, we're gonna call it from static celestial to static celestial. So if you warp from the sun to a moon and drop a bookmark when you're flying, that is a line spot right? A line safe. Um, if you drop a bookmark from anywhere within that polygon we talked about, so if you go from the sun to a signature, or if you go from a signature to anomaly, or if you go from an anomaly to a poco, those are all, you drop a bookmark when you're in warp, those are all polygonal safes, or we'll call them poly safes, right? If you put every possible polygonal safe together, that forms the polygon. Right, that helps you understand what we're talking about with the polygon. So, the last category of systemic relation we're going to talk about is strange. That's everything else. That's things that are not aligned and are not in the polygon, right? So, anything outside of that polygon we discussed, that is a strange safe, okay? Now that you know we're, we're comparing distance from celestial and systemic relationship, you understand that we can have a bunch of different types based on those words, right? So, we'll just go through a, a few of them that are interesting. We're not going to go through all of them, I'll spare you. But um, let's talk about um, a close line safe, right? A close line safe is, for example, here, we'll just pull it up. So a close line safe is, here, I got one right here. This is a close line. It's when you go from celestial to celestial, but you're still within D-scan range of those celestials, right? So you can see that that's between these two clusters, right? Um, these are like quick and easy. You know, you make these every day probably for various purposes. You just warp around, drop safes. These are probably close lines. Um, interestingly enough, just because something's a line safe doesn't mean it's necessarily um, not secure at all, right? Because you can have a line safe that is far or true even, right? And here's an example of that. So we have the system shape here, right? This is the system shape. The polygon would be like that where my mouse is, if you can even see it. And if we work from the center cluster out here and drop a bookmark in the middle, what we get is a far line safe, right? And that means that when we're there, we descan, we don't see any celestials. But it's still line safe. It's still vulnerable to the lineal attack, right? You kind of understand what a line safe is. It makes sense, right? So how about a polygonal safe? Polygonal safes are defined as warping from anything to anything within the polygon and dropping a bookmark, right? So, in many ways, they're not that different from line saves. You typically make them in the same fashion. But the difference is one of your endpoints, your start or your endpoint, cannot be a celestial. So, we go from a wormhole to a celestial. That would be a polygonal, right? So, let's look at a polygonal far safe, or a far polygonal safe is how we'll call them moving forward once I get used to all the nomenclature. So, this is a far poly safe. 
It's 19.2 away from the nearest scan. That's why it's far, right? And you're like, okay, it's right next to the line. Why is it not a line? Because if you look really closely, you'll see that that was actually from a signature that no longer exists. It wasn't actually in line. So even though if it's just off a little bit, as long as one of those endpoints was not a celestial, it's a poly. And most bookmarks are polygonal, to be clear. Um, these are the, the more secure ones. And the reason for that is you need combat scanners to find these generally, unless the signature is still up and somebody performs a lineal attack while it's still up. That's true. But once that signature despawns, it becomes polygonal and you need combats, okay? Now, the last category we're going to talk about are strange safes. Now, these are, you can't make these through normal means. You need various techniques that change through the years. Um, I, I'd like to let you do the legwork on how that works. Um, Google is your friend, and you can you can find ways to do this even now. But a strange safe is essentially anything that fits outside of that system shape we talk about. So here's the takeaway. You don't have to think about bookmarks like this. You don't have to think about safety like this. But I want you to at least understand that when you're dealing with safe spots, you're dealing with two concepts. You're dealing with how far it is, which dictates how hard it is to descan and if it's even descanable. And then you're going to think about how it relates to the rest of the system. Okay. Think about that. Try to use less line safes. Try to make more poly safes, right? These are just as easy to make as lines, just way more secure, right? A line safe, you probably don't want to ever make a single one ever again past this point, right? You really don't. Um, you want to probably just use polys from now on. And if you can figure out how to make stranges, use those. That's really the ticket, right? So... I hope this was enlightening. I don't know how much of this was useful or how much of it was just me kind of blabbering, but I think thinking about safes in this way is going to help us moving forward and it's going to allow us to make better informed decisions on the fly, right? Let's say we got to leave. We're not going to this close line. We're not going to this far poly, right? We're going straight to the bottom of this list for the best possible bookmarks, right? Cool. That was, um... Quite a lot of words. I expected that to be faster, so thanks for hanging in there. Okay, so I'm super freaking out right now. I'm super excited. I'm sure you can see why. So in this system, we have two vitals and an instrumental core, right? Here's the instrumental. Here's the two vitals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my butt in here, like freaking ASAP. <laughs> and uh, start to work on these over the next couple days and hope I can get them before they despawn. See if anybody stops me, you know? Oof. That's a lot of gas. So anyway, I'm gonna do a move up, essentially slide in here. Um, and then during downtime, we'll get set up, make a couple saves, hang out, and then we'll start chipping away at gas. Oof. This is awesome. Freaking awesome. Alright, so the rats are going to spawn soon on the first site here. And, um, I don't really care about clearing little small clouds on these, so what I'll probably do is just move now. And see if, um, well, there's really nothing to see. I guess we do have to make sure that the spot works, though, so... 319 to the spawn point. I mean, that should do her. Should do it. Once you're all set up here, you know the rats are going to spawn soon. 
or you assume they will. Go ahead and zoom way out, and then you just sit there. Pretty easy. You know, the steps you'd have to take to kill these ventures here, I mean, it's totally doable. You can totally kill these ventures with a combat scan and a saber. I know, but it's kind of extreme what you'd have to go through to get these. Like, think about getting all the way to a class six. You know what I mean? Setting up, knowing I'm here. <laughs> I don't know. Craziest part is like, you'd probably lose the dictor. I mean, if it's like shit fit, you'd probably lose the dictor. Um, yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see if that's the case. But for now, we're going to work on this instrumental core reservoir for today and uh, see how far we can get this cloud of 320. And then with a little luck, both of these vitals up here, they will stick around for a couple days and we can get them too and become filthy rich. Heck yeah. Check back in if uh, anything interesting happens while mining this over the next couple hours. What? Holy shit, we finally got caught. Oh my god. Well, they got two ventures, not bad. They got half of my ventures in one fell swoop. That is the first time somebody's ever killed one of my ventures out here. I have been waiting for this day. <laughs> wow. Alright, so it's been some time since those ventures have died. And I've done a bit of reflecting. The first thing is that I think doing this, I'm going to lose ventures, right? We're keeping them stood still right next to each other in space where people know what the heck they're doing, right? We're going to lose ventures and I'm totally okay with that. So we're not hung up on that at all. Um, I'm in a scenario now though, where I have to make some decisions, right? Um, the first decision is how am I going to get the ventures back in, right? And that's fine. We'll, we'll figure that out. We'll scan away. Because what I'm going to do is probably take a day and try to get all the gas I have back to K-Space before I do anything else, right? Just get, uh, get some of the isk we've earned back to where we can sell it, right? Um, the second thing I have to think about is that... Well, look. I understand... I am acutely aware of the idea that these dudes are better than me, right? And while I can sit here all I want and say, yeah, I have all these cool safe spots and stuff and I can do all this, that, and the third. At the end of the day, you know, I'm going to give them the credit that they deserve. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to stay here and I'm not going to go for these vital cores, right? That might seem a little weird, like, why not just try it and see if you get caught again kind of thing. But it's not even about that. It's like, to me, they prove that they're watching this system. They prove that they have the ability to do a quick combat scan, land multiple sabers on me. They've proven everything they need to prove for me to recognize that I can't mine here. Period. So, I basically recorded what happened uh, on Pathfinder, and I tried to note down who did what and what the setup was and everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move out of this system in a couple days and we're gonna keep it moving there are so many core gas sites out there i do not want to push my luck and go for these vital cores and further disrespect these guys right here's how i'm gonna play this if i'm in your system and i'm taking your gas and you kill my ventures i'm gone there's no fuss i'm just gonna leave you know whenever it's convenient for me 
I'll, I'll get out of there. I'm not going to harass you any longer. That's how I want to do it. Um, you do have to obviously earn that respect by killing the Ventures. Or combat scanning the Porpoise and killing that. That's another option. But um, the Ventures is a lot easier to do. So, Long story short, we're going to chill for a little bit. We kind of got woken up a little bit as to the dangers of C6 base and how good these guys are. So we're going to chill, we're going to take our time, we're going to build chains, and we're going to get our gas back to K-Space. We're going to bring our new ventures in, and then we're going to move, okay? We're not going to hit these guys' gas anymore. Um, and basically, we'll check back in when we have an idea of how we're going to move our gas out, and then we'll take a look at that process. Okay, this is actually just straight crazy, but that class 6 that we lost the ventures in, turns out that system is seven jumps from Jitta. Right? Um. Yeah, we literally went from the C6 to a C2, from the C2 to high sec, and the high sec was four jumps from Jitta, so. Yeah, this is awesome. This makes me feel even a little bit less bad about losing the ships and having to get them back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the ventures in, reunite them with the squad, and then we will simply uh, extract our gas to Jitta with the blockade runner. We're not gonna rock the boat quite yet, but um, we might be switching to a DST at some point. We'll see. Yeah, easy peasy. Pretty happy about that. Okay, so check this out. How cool is this? There's another group using this same hole to move in right now. <laughs> I wonder if they're gonna try to stop my ventures. It's so crazy. I wanna go back and watch them for sure. Damn, I really wanna go watch them. That's a lash. Man, this is crazy to be crossing these guys like this. Jeez. It's kind of nice though. I'm almost using them as cover in a way. Kind of cool though. You know what type of ships they got. They closed it. No. Well, I didn't anticipate there being a random Sestero here. That's weird. if he's going to respond to this. Okay. Worked off. Interesting system. Rusty knife production. Okay. Interesting. So we're just going to do a quick move off here. out of that one system where they killed us into another one. The only reason I'm hesitant is because we have all this gas on us. Let's do it. Still isn't on scan, not still not on scan yet. They're finally on scan. Other side's looking awfully clear. It's tempting to drop a bubble, but I'm gonna restrain myself. I just want the dude on D scan.
think we did it. Almost, almost home, almost home free. Oh man, this is anxiety inducing. All right, let's pull in then. All right, this is really cool. So I've been actually looking for this for quite some time. And I'm not 100% sure I'll be able to do it this time, but I'm just happy I found one, all right? Basically, what I've found is there's a class five data combat site called um, Unsecured Frontier Server Bank. And occasionally inside of these, there is a data can or a relic can, right? And you can kind of drag the rats away from him. I've never done it before, but like, how hard could it be, truthfully, you know? Oh, okay, we're way off. Basically, what we do is we look at this, and there's an abandoned... See this can right here? This one? It's different than the other ones. It's a battleship wreck. And inside of here is, a, I don't know, like a 50 mil, 100 mil, something like that. Nothing crazy, but worth grabbing. Um... I've been looking for one of these for a while, I just could never find one. I've been in a lot of C5s, I just couldn't see one of these. Not sure why. But hopefully today we get one. So basically, what we want to do is... I think I'll come at this from another angle. I think that angle seems good. So can we save a location here? Is that possible? Okay, let's save that rock. And what we're going to do is we're going to warp to this class five, and we're gonna work back to here at 100, drop another bookmark so we get in line. And then from there, it's really simple. We're just gonna pull the rats away until they're a certain distance away. And um, once they're a certain distance away, we're gonna work if they can and try to hack it. I mean, remember, this is a fresh character, so I'd be quite surprised if we got it, but never know. All right, so we warp here at 100. Go ahead and drop this bookmark. Get ready to drop another one on the landing. There you go. What we do now is we warp to this one. Drop another bookmark. And then we can delete that bookmark and are there any other ones oh we got rid of the other one okay all right oh see that one frigate that's annoying look how far out he is what is he doing that's weird i don't like that look how far out those frigates are jeez all right anyway we're gonna try it so if those are 800 and this is 720 we pretty much just gotta warp here at like. Those are 780, and this is 720. We gotta warp here at 70. And then burn out to this thing. Essentially, that's how I understand this to work. I mean, who knows? Could lose a ship here. I don't really care. Nah, we should be good. Yeah, the rats are hella far away. I'm not even sure they're aggro me, but we'll see. Will they? Oh, they didn't aggro me? I wasn't close enough? Oh, yeah, they did. Okay, perfect. Now we just drag them. Alright. Pretty simple stuff. We're moving awfully quick. The speed fit's coming in handy here. We're moving quicker than the, um... Than the frigates, so that's good. Anyway, we want to watch the backmost... Cruiser. And when they are, like, 150... 200 kilometers away from that can, that's when I turn around and warp to the can. That's pretty much how this works. I'll give it a whirl and see if I can hack it. I mean, if not, no worries. I'm just trying to get practice. This is just cool to find one, so. Yeah. Keep on burning. So 320 minus 260. You gotta keep doing the math in your head. You can do it over here, too. It's about to be a hundred. We're looking for like almost 200 before we turn around. So this number has got to be 200 less than this number. Right, it's like 110. 
Now that of range. 120. About 130. 135. We're going to keep it going. It's 150. 160. Get ready to go here. And I'm gonna go see if I should be enough time. If not, then whatever. Okay, Let's see if we can hack this. This would be neat. See how far the rat is? One, one ninety. Okay, we got plenty of time. Plenty of time. Let's see if we can take our time and do it. We got that until that hits like one ten. But we have like no hacking skills. Don't forget. Oh, we did it. Yo, let's go. This is sick. Three mil. Okay, well, that was a bit of a sad one. Hey, well, at least we did it. And look how, how much time we had left. Okay, this is really chill. Wait, what's up with that loot? <laughs> that was really underwhelming. That must have just been a really bad roll, but we're not going to worry about it. I just like trying this stuff, you know? And I've been really hoping to try that for a while. It's a really simple hacking technique. You just pull them off and hack it. It's just a single can. But I like that. That's variety gaming right there. Ghost sites, talic hands, stuff like that. Especially if these end up paying me like 50 mil to 100 mil each. That would be great. But <laughs> 3 mil, that's not worth the trouble. <laughs> oh, man. This might just look like another last one wormhole. But you know your J space. You'll know that that's a wolf riot, right? And if you really know your J space, you'll know that if that's a wolf riot and this is a small hole, then what does that make this? Well, not guaranteed, but there's an awfully good chance that it's a shattered hole. And not just any shattered hole, a class 13. Look at all those signatures and anomalies. It's beautiful, right? I could bring my porpoise, my probe, all my ventures and stuff into here and make some safes and try to huff this stuff up. But truthfully, right now, I'm still looking for another core cloud to latch onto. So um, we're actually going to skip this C13 for now. We do have some seated, so we can always try to come back into them. However, these holes are definitely camped. There's like a Discord form. There's all sorts of stuff. So um, we would have to put some thought into living in these if we wanted to do that before we just YOLO in there. So we will come back. But for now, um, yeah, no, no C13 for us. Okay, so it turns out that the idea of just sitting on the far edge of the cloud and not aggroing the rats not only applies to both of the core gas sites, but also at least one of the frontiers, the Bountiful we're in now. So I'm kind of like, okay, <laughs> kind of annoyed that I <laughs> have been clearing these for like months now, and apparently I didn't have to, so... Um, yeah, so I guess I'm happy to learn about it now. Better late than never, so. Yeah. Uh, bountiful, vast. All you gotta do is just go to the other side of the cloud and sit there. Rats don't even aggro you. Pretty wild stuff. Pretty wild stuff, so. We'll probably add these to the repertoire because, you know, decent little clip of isk for one or two trips. So. Yeah, see what happens. Opening up more possibilities every time we uh, learn more stuff. Yeah, look at that. Oh, jeez. 
What are they doing? One guardian that is too far away, it's too funny. Oh, I want to go ahead and see what they killed. a little can but if I cross that I saw a bubbler I'm not interested in crossing that wormhole they could totally frag my tech 3 cruisers if they were good which they are kind of neat all right there they are again hello lads oh now they're gonna work to the c5 okay but they went over there ah well I hope they had a good fight Whoa. There was a pacifier and an heiress. They finally went home. Huh. Oh, is that their scanner and their... Oh, so they finally left there? So the heiress was sitting on this. Yeah, I kind of just assumed that the heiress was going to be there. I guess that's a clear sign that it's no longer there. Let's try going through there now. What was it? KSM? No, it was... um. Badge. I'm just gonna try sending my Cheetah through or my probe through. Interesting, they have a combination scanner and interdictor as their main uh, way to interact. It's kind of neat. I mean, if they still have a dictor here, that'd be really awkward, but I really don't think they do. Oh, it's not this one. Wait. Oh, it's a buzzard. Neat. All right, so I've kind of just been hanging out, haven't been scooping too much in the past couple days, but that's okay. I like to play at my own pace, just like you like to play at your own pace, right? So I popped on today. I was going to try to find a core cloud, right? But instead of that, I found, well, maybe we should just show you. So maybe the better way to show you would be on the list here. Look how many gas sites are in this class four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven gas sites. Three of them are frontiers. I mean, this is, I can't ignore this. I have to come in here and do this. So even though I'm out here to get the core clouds, I mean, I cannot ignore this. This is beautiful. And this system even has a class one and a class two static. So I can easily get the gas out should I be successful. So, yeah, we're definitely moving in here, and wouldn't you know it, I have the porpoise all prepped up, and he's already in warp. Let's get the porpoise through the hole real quick and get him safed up. And then, um, yeah, we can get to work on these clouds, it's pretty cool. Pretty nuts. Alright, so let's go ahead and go to our true poly here. Align. Cloak micro. And... Hang out for a couple seconds. Turn that off. Warp. And snaps us right into warp. Somebody has a bunch of prospects there. That's CMN. Huh. Interesting. He's pretty quick, pretty far away. Not too far. Oh, he's pretty fucking far. Eh, we'll see if he notices. I really doubt we're gonna get this guy. I kinda need him to be huffing a cloud, I guess. 
No, oh, there he is. Where do I kill him, actually? He's too fast. I don't even think we move as fast as him, sadly. Crazy. What a fail. Do I have anything that can even catch that? That's the crazy part. No, not really. No, not really. Alright, so there was a guy with a bunch of prospects in this system trying to take this gas that I set up on. Um, I built a bunch of safe spots earlier and noticed he was doing it and tried to chase him off. I wasn't able to catch him. My Aeris pilot is quite embarrassingly bad still. Um, however, I think we've successfully chased him off um, out of the system because I haven't seen him in like an hour now. So what I've done, if you look closely, you can see a bookmark up here. I've set a bookmark at each of the frontiers. There's another bookmark, right? And this is the third frontier, another bookmark. Those three bookmarks are nomad scoop spots. So what I'm gonna do is just hang out today on and off and send my ventures to these. And just try to get all three of these uh, frontiers because that's still like a bill or so, or more, I'm not even sure, even with tech twos, so yeah. Let's try that out. We'll give it a whirl, and um, yeah, if anybody comes to stop us or we manage to catch that prospect, we'll definitely take a look at that. But if everything goes smoothly, you should hear me counting uh, metaphorical Benjamins here in a little bit. So, yeah, see you in a bit. So he has no idea I have all these ships. He thinks I just have an Eris. I'm surprised he hasn't Z-killed me though. This guy looks like a solo corp. Pretty wild. Tempted to try to catch him, honestly. Oh, there he is. Get him with the Proteus here.
where the bubble landed. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Actually, I like that. Cool. I got my excitement going. I guess he just didn't see me that whole time. It's pretty hard to believe, but... You gotta believe it. Wait, did I get my drones? Yes, okay. Let's just cloak up. So I'm pretty sure that he's not gonna be coming to take my gas again. <laughs> Jeez. Too funny. stuff. Alright, so now I took a little break and came back and now there's a venture in here mining, so I think he's in here. Oh, he's in a capsule now. Oh, he just died. Oh my god, no way did he go to the ordinary. No, 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 no. He went to the ordinary. Bro. What in the heck am I watching? That's too funny. Now what hole is he gonna go to is the question. Yeah, he was in the C2. Oh, that's so tragic. Zedek 07. Okay, this is just crazy. The venture that just died earlier now has a gnosis here. Okay. This is crazy. So what we can do here is we can actually leave fleet on all the eyes, start the warp, and then close all of our clients and immediately log on to our PvP tunes. I'll show you what this looks like. because they complete the warp and then they just scatter off or try to log out there and since it's in a true safe and their ventures we don't really care. But basically what happens is we can now log on our guys and this would have taken a lot longer if we waited. Basically we're gonna try to kill this Gnosis. I think I, yeah I got the right guys, cool. I don't know if they're gonna huff with the Gnosis is or what. Is dirt, so I could warp here, technically, and tackle them. I think I will if they stay and fight this. Just about ready here. Next one dies and gone. Just have to try to get both, that's my only problem. Maybe I should just go for one. That might be the play. Let's go for one if the other one stays, kill that. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, let's go.
Okay. We got a loot here. Oh, that's pretty neat. I was thinking about going for the other one, but I got a little scared. I'm not gonna lie. That's all, all it came down to. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Go to there. Poor Curse got beat up by a uh, rat. <laughs> And here we stand, at the uh, same gas site where we just killed that Gnosis. But now we're huffing gas. I think we got his body here somewhere. Where is it? There it is. We went back and got his corpse. Hooray! So this has been crazy, like chaotic, crazy, whatever word you want to use. Uh, a lot of people in the, in the system. So we're going to try to pay attention and see if we can pick up any more kills. But hopefully it, it's uh, calmer because was kind of just hoping to clear these out today with no drama, but here we are. The beauty of class four and class two in full display. All right, awesome. So that is the third frontier that we have popped the large cloud on. And after a little drama with uh, some locals or I guess day trippers, we managed to secure all three clouds. Cool. Now, um, I want to show you what this looks like in the nitty and gritty because we've been doing a fair amount of like fast forwarding just because gas, right? It makes sense. But um, what happens is I go to these sites, I fill up on gas, and then I warp to one bookmark like this. And I usually try to warp to a poly. And now once I'm at this poly, now that I can be reasonably certain that nobody's watching my ventures at this exact location, because I've been descanning the whole time. Now we warp to the true strange we're using as a staging, right? This is just an extra layer of protection to keep our true safes a little bit safer. Decent little warp out there, but that's okay. We're patient. We're built for this. So let's go ahead and land here, and you're gonna notice something right off the bat, and that is that. Um, What did I do? My cargo cannon's not here. I made a mistake. Oh, it's over here. Okay, no worries. So basically, I lost track of where I left my cargo can. Not a great look. That's why we bookmark it. But usually I've been dropping out the furthest safe that I have, but this time I dropped it at a decent little poly here. A 20.1 true poly. Alright, no worries. So, basically what happens is you warp to one bookmark, warp to your actual safe to obfuscate where you're warping. And once you get here, dump all your gas in a jet can, just like this. I did it pretty smooth just there, because I've been doing this a while. But basically you double click on it. On your four characters, you move back to your mining hole, and then you drag it all in real quick. Yeah. So then what you want to do is go ahead and leave your fleet, and then start logging out. Now, if we had more gas to mine, we would only log out one or two of these ventures, and the remaining ones, the remaining two or three, we would send back to the cloud. But since we've run out of gas that we want to mine today, we're gonna log them all out and give them some rest. In fact, let's put that in there as well before we forget. Cool. Once your ventures log out, next step is log in your porpoise, log in your crane, 
log in a little bit of muscle and put it all together. So let's go ahead and cloak up a couple of our guys that need it. And the number one most important thing is getting the orca doing what it's supposed to be doing as uh, quick as possible. We're gonna warp to this cargo container with the porpoise. And on the Eris, we're gonna warp there at 20. We'll warp to the cargo with the crane at 10. And we'll keep watch over it with the Loki. Cool. Go ahead and remove the bookmark for the cargo container. Should see a porpoise popping up on D scan here any second now. There it is. Let's go ahead and orbit the cam with our Eris. Okay, here's what we gotta do next. We have to scoop up the gas in the cargo can with our porpoise. Once you do that, you go ahead and compress it. Excellent. Stack it and drop it again. Now on the crane, you go over to it. Which is in there? 2K, okay, perfect. And on the crane, you wanna go ahead and you can go ahead and micro over there, it's no big deal. You're gonna scoop that up. Now, the reason I'm showing you this was, you know, just to give you a behind the scenes look at how we're moving the gas around. But also, look at my crane. It's filled with containers. We're actually making extensive use of the expandable container theory here. Where if you fill it with containers, you can carry a lot more than you would otherwise be able to, right? And that's really not that revolutionary. However, we are going to be using it a lot here since we're not gonna bring the DST out, right? So we have, what is it, 11 large containers. They each hold 780, they're all full now. So that's 7,800 right there. And then we have, you know, the normal expanded cargo hold. So we can hold quite a lot of gas with a little blockade runner here, yeah? Let's get our porpoise cloaked up. it back over there so long story short we need to use containers to fit all the gas and right now we're at pretty much max capacity right we have about 1k left but if we didn't have all these containers then we'd be looking at uh, being completely full right now so we could squeeze a little bit more in but uh, we're, we're done for now so the next steps are bringing this to Jitta and um, another reason why these containers aren't named is because I just plop them in the hangar and then I repackage them and it dumps all of the gas out into my hangar. So I don't have to goof around with a bunch of clicking and dragging stuff. So just a small little efficiency. But yeah, we're going to safe up the port, log them out, and we will simply count our money and see if we can get into some more trouble. Seems good. Been a heck of a day. Um... I guess I can't really show you exactly how much gas I have, but yeah, we'll save it for later when I do the grand tally. So either way, uh, pretty damn cool day. I didn't expect to have to fight for gas. That was like, you know, the true gas wars, but no, I wasn't really fighting back or anything, but really cool. Really cool. And here we are back in Jitta. Really not that much longer later, we found a nice connection. And I just want to show you why I don't even bother renaming these containers. I told you originally, but it's better if you could see it. So if we drag these containers into our hangar and then we simply repackage them, right? All that stuff gets dumped out. Everything inside of there gets dumped out. And now we just take these, double click them a couple times, rebuild them, and then drag them back into our cargo bay. <laughs> That's it. Pretty easy, right? Let's see if there's anything else that we have to dump out. And then we refit back to travel mode. Well, we would technically be refitting for high sec first. 
and then we'll for the travel when we go into Tama. But for now, we're gonna transfer this stuff over. To our banker. So drag this to that. And that's all she wrote. Great. So now we'll put the gas in there. I think the rest of this is just rando stuff. So we'll put it in the cell. Easy. Cool. Phew! Those Tama camps are always a little scary. Okay, so we are in that class four doing those frontiers and stuff. And randomly, I decided to scan this class one. And inside of this class one, are a lot of perimeter sites. It looks like six of them. So what I kind of feel like doing is, as mentioned earlier, one of the reasons we changed the setup to the porpoise was that with the orca, we actually can't go in these holes. We can't bring the orcas in, so we would never be able to move in to the, to the hole, basically. With the porpoise though, we can move every ship we own into this hole because this is a medium hole. Porpoise fits through just fine. So what I'm gonna do is move everybody in here right now, and then we're gonna bang out most of these perimeter sites and just hang out and chill. And the reason I'm doing this is because, I don't know, this is a class one with a low static. It's about as quiet as it gets. So I kind of just feel like chilling today. But what I'll do is I'll keep my eyes open for other connections. We did have a class four in here, but it's a friggin' hole. Sadly, we can't fit our cruisers through it, so. Anyway, what we'll do is chill, grab a couple of these clouds, and um, take it from there. See if we can grab a few more cores this month before uh, we run out of time. Yeah. Um, Random Astero just checking his gate. I'm not sure what his plan is. He went in. My dictator is like sitting here. <laughs> it's weird. I'm not sure what I can do here. It's possible he's going to try to drift off and scan. And if he does that, I might be able to ram where he was and decloak him and catch him off guard. There he is. He's right there. He's headed that way. So if I double click down there. Yep. Watch this. Watch this. Ready? 9,000 meters. So I'd have to micro like now, I guess. And there's a small chance that we're going to hit this guy. No? We missed him? Damn. It'd be better if we had drones, of course, to assist, but we were a little late on that. Alrighty. So that cloud is done. Um... That was a token perimeter. And it's really not worth that much. It's like 50 mil, so. But it was over and done with really fast, so that's kind of cool. All right, the token is gone. Let's remove that. Excellent. Okay, wow, look at that. Another cloud. Another cloud gone, just like that. This one was a minor perimeter reservoir, as evidenced by this bookmark, IXQ. Goodbye, IXQ. It was fun. On to the next one. Baron. Just cleaned up real quick. Not a very profitable site, but gone in one trip. We like that. So next we'll do an ordinary, which should take us two trips. This is the biggest perimeter out there. So what we'll do is we'll warp right there. Fill up instead of wasting trips. Easy peasy. Okay. Well, the ordinary stood no chance against the might 
of my ventures. What clouds remain? A sizable and a token. Onwards! Hey yo! Site number five. Gone. Sizable. Gone. On to the next one. The token. The last one. And then this whole system has been completely cleared out. Cloud having just despawned. That marks the 12th cloud in the system that we've cleared. And the 6th site. We'll log our um, other venture back in. We'll start dropping gas off. We'll compress it, throw it in the crane, and we'll either run it back today or tomorrow. We might just do it tomorrow. This has a low stake static. It's not too hard to get the Jetta. Cool. Just a, just a casual stroll through Waitama, and there's like a huge ball of ships here that I'm not sure what's going on, but it's a bit scary. I mean, look at all those ships. That's insanity. Huh. I wonder what they're up to. They also don't look like ganking ships, a lot of them. Okay, so, look what we have here. It's our old friend, the Astero. Why are we in this Astero? Hmm, good question. Could it be because there is a... Wait, whoa. Whoa. I was about to take my time and explain this, but somebody's in here. We have to go. Alright, well there's no goofing around. We're gonna do a ghost site. Right now. Fabulous. And our lessons are the same as they were before. We're simply going to start over here. And we'll decloak when we get close. Overheat this. Start the timer. All right, be ready. I'm gonna start the timer now. Okay, we're hacking. Okay, we got one. Cool. Go to the next one. One micro, no micro. Target. When we get close, we'll go ahead and push the stop command and start hacking. Reapproach. Click, click, D scan. We're at 38 seconds. Where is it hiding? There it is. We're at 53 seconds. Cool. Now go to the next can. Micro on, micro off. Okay, we have sister probes. They're still not on us. We're fine. We're basically waiting for rats now. We're going to stop. We're going to hack. We're waiting for rats. We're looking to warp off as soon as you see a rat on it appear. Okay, we got three. Oh, we're not close enough. We made a mistake here. I might be bailing on the last can here. Okay. We'll go for the last one. See if the rats come. Target. Stop. Reapproach. Re Hack. No rats yet. Let's see if we can make a play. I'm a little shaky right now. They gotta be coming soon, right? There it is. We got all four cans again. 
Let's go. Warp off. Yo, look, he's trying to close in on it. He's within 5 AU of it. Whoa, that was exhilarating. Whew. My clicking hand is actually a little, um, a little off. I couldn't get my clicks right, but either way, it worked out. We got them all. Let's take a look at what we got. I haven't even looked at all yet. What is this, high grade Delta? It's worth a little bit. Three pack rats, two way two. Couple of uh, weird components. That poor Tengu. Man, I barely, barely made it in time. He was literally scanning that down. Either way, whoa, another ghost site. My heart's still racing. These things are the best. I feel like I just got a lot of money too. All right, so this is kind of cool. I had a little, I had a little chat with this Tengu pilot, and he left his mobile depot in there because he was gonna refit for the ghost site. And I'm like, hey, you wanna get your mobile depot back and I won't camp it? And he's like, sure, that'd be great. So I pulled all my characters in the case space so he could go grab it real quick. Um, hopefully he doesn't take too long. I'm really surprised he trusted me because maybe he has a nullifier on there now because if he is not nullified, I could have killed this now perhaps. So he's gotta be really careful, but I'm not going to because I told him to go get it, but kind of a cool little interaction. With a little bit of luck, we should see him pop out here in, a, I don't know, about a minute and a half. What would be really cool is to decloak all of my guys when he comes back through. That'd be nuts. It'd be cool if I could see it through his perspective, but I doubt I'll be able to. But either way, when he flashes, what I want to do is point all of my ships at the hole. Give him a little, give him a little spook. I still can't get over the timing of that ghost site. That was crazy. Like, we were like seconds away from getting that stolen from us. Okay, so I'm in a very interesting scenario right now. And I gotta be, I gotta make sure I'm careful. Okay, we're probably gonna have to move our butts now. And what we're doing here is very strange. But we're actually moving our porpoise into Thera. And the reason I wanna do this is because we found a relatively fresh hole to Thera that signal cartel just now scouted which I find pretty interesting now it looks to me like we're gonna be able to pull this off but obviously this is really sketchy to do a cloaked dictator could put a damper on our plans here but I think we made it in nobody's on either D scan so what we do is we go ahead and go through with the porpoise Nobody on any D scan? Okay. Fabulous. And we have a bookmark all set up. Align, cloak micro. And finally decloak and warp. And just like that, we have moved our porpoise into Thera. If that is not evidence that this porpoise moving stuff is safe, I don't know what is. Alright guys, that was episode 10, 10 of a Nomad Tale, and I really got to show off how mobile and flexible a porpoise-based Nomad setup could be, and I'm really happy I did this. Am I going to continue playing with the porpoise? Am I going to go back to the orca? Am I going to try something new? I don't know. And neither do you. But what I do know is that I'm still having a really good time playing Eve, 
and making ants. So I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. I'm going to take it slow, take it at my own pace, and continue exploring the wonder that is Anoikos. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. See you on the next one.